about black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move for me. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. Reality simple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move for me. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. Alrighty then. Peace, love, and always. This is your brother, the Angel Snuffin' Up 7, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome. <laughs> I'm, tongue, I'm tongue tied. And welcome once again to another edition <laughs> of the Realities Temple on Earth. Oh, man. Since I'm before the camera, I, I wanted to deal with this subject before I shut shut the equipment down. This uh, message is, is really for the men, the males, rather than the ladies. But of course, I like for the ladies to also, the women, even some of the girls. There's a difference between girls, ladies, and women. But it's good for all. And I would hope that grown adult women would stop allowing people to call them girls because you're not a girl. There's a difference. A girl is immature. A girl is a child. You're a grown woman. Some of y'all are very grown. You're 50, 60 years old. You should see or feel that it is disrespectful. Blah, man, I'm tongue-tied. It's disrespectful to call you a girl. And if you're not, and if you're not a bimbo or acting like some uh, loose woman, then you should, if you're uh, between a girl and a woman, you're lady and you're ladylike, then either you're a grown woman or they should call you a wonderful young lady. This message goes out to these men who I believe, I'm not really sure because I haven't really been out there in a long time, but I'm pretty sure they still like bashing women and they got this thing about and the feminism this and the women that and la 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 la. I just cannot get into that. I just I just cannot do it because a man is just too strong. In a lot of cases, he's strong mentally. We already know physically, but he can become strong. Mentally or verbally, and words hurt women. Women, the way we've been conditioned, women are more emotional than men are. So you have all these black women bashing videos. The women get so emotional, they know they should stay away. Leave these guys alone. Let them simmer in their own anger or frustration or whatever. But they go to these videos and they make these comments just so these misguided men can beat up on them. This is what I want to say to black men or any man that bashes a woman verbally, let alone physically. Okay, we got a problem on our hands. We know that feminism and other things have caused this division between men and women. We know this. So, answer my question, how 
do you achieve any type of benefit by bashing constantly these women who are nothing but a victim of what you say, feminism and whatever. What are you going to gain? The majority of my job was in customer service. And when you come to McDonald's, the person at the register is supposed to tell you, Hi, welcome to McDonald's. My name is so-and-so. Have a nice day. What would you like? Very kind and courteous. If you want women to listen to what you're talking about, if you went to McDonald's and you were getting ready to give your order, how would you react to somebody? Yeah. Yeah, you're at McDonald's. Where the hell do you think you was at? Man, this, this damn menu been up here for for a hundred years. You don't know what the menu McDonald's is selling the same stuff since 1965 or whatever. Damn, man, hurry up. I got a date later on. How would you feel with that type of attitude when you go to McDonald's? You wouldn't like it. So how do you expect to get any response from these women? How do you think you're going to get them to listen to what you have to say by that type of talk? Bash, 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 and y'all this, and the woman is that, and blah, blah. Why don't you change your strategy? And not only to women, that's anybody. Nobody want to hear about their negativity, what's wrong with them all the time. People want to hear nice things. They want to hear kind things. That's why a lot of these women get pregnant. Because the dude, the guy who they talking with, he said, Hey, baby. Damn, that's a fly dress you got on. Hey, what's that you, what's that you wearing? That show smells good. Man, that's. Ooh, look at your teeth. They so bright and shiny. You know you got it together. There ain't no woman as fly. I'm, no, I'm serious. Ain't no woman as fly as you. You, you really got it going on. You, boy, if I could turn a flip, hey, I'd be turning blue, blue. You got to bring a little something better. When you praise people, Regardless whether they deserve it or not. When you praise people. When you talk to them in a positive manner. They will begin to listen to you. Ain't that what you want? Don't you want the woman? Don't, want, don't you want the woman to embrace you? Don't you want her hug? Don't you want her kiss? You can't, you can't get that by... Feeding her. Or anybody. It's always good to be kind. Now in my case. <laughs> it's a little different. You're not me. In my case I try to be kind. And I. <laughs> they still keep. Want to whack on me. <laughs> hey. I, I can't. Hey. I can't win for losing. So. But you're not me. You're not me. You just want a decent conversation with the women so you can tell them what has happened so they can break up out of what feminism has caused them to behave or condition them to be. And there are other factors. Whatever you want to explain to them was the cause behind male-female division. But I'm telling you, from experience and it's common sense, nobody wants to be hurt and beat. You don't either. I used to have some old videos, and I knew I was just talking about men should not beat and beat women verbally, and just talking about men in general. But y'all went nuts. You flagged the videos. You went crazy. That. Do then you went ballistic because you don't want nobody talking negative about you.
Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the angel snuffing up seven, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another, hopefully, exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I was born in the 1960s. A few months after I was born, the President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, was assassinated. About two years later, I was probably two years old or three, one of our great leaders, Malcolm X, was assassinated. And then three years later, Martin Luther King. I lived, I was born during a period of civil rights struggle in America. Black people were standing up for their rights and for the first time in our history learning about their blackness on such a national level. All over the country there was brother and sister talk. There was something called black pride. But within black pride there were those who still carry a grave slave mentality. They still consider themselves colored people. They still consider themselves Negro. And the only reason why they didn't like black was because black was made to look as being an inferior. When I was growing up, I was darker than a lot of my family members and classmates. But what hurt so bad was the taunts and the mockery of my being dark, not from strangers, of which were black people, because I didn't really see white people until I got some age on me. I, it was a long time before I seen Caucasian people. It was black people who was making mockery that I was dark. I was called coal baby, tar baby, you know, black Yankee, all anything, black devil. Some of y'all might call me a black devil today. <laughs> y'all are something else. But uh yeah. So for me. I had to either learn how to love myself as being a dark black man or attempt to do what I've seen others do is try to make myself as Caucasian looking as possible. I am so happy that I had relatives in the nation of Islam who gave me books that taught me how to love my black self. So it never got that far where I had to experiment with trying to find a more Caucasian look or behave like a Caucasian, act like a Caucasian. And those who made mockery of me, since I began to learn what my blackness was, I learned how to defend that dark skin. I learned how to defend the big nose and the thick lips and made those who were also dark or maybe a lighter skin black with big nose, thick, thick lips and kinky hair. Made them look silly because you're trying to be something that you're not. That's the subject of this video. Whereas I learned that I was a black man that come from a strong people. 
and I learn how to embrace my darkness, there are those back then and there are those now that hate their darkness. More and more, especially our celebrities, those blacks that can influence our babies, they are wearing their hair more straight. Even if it's a weave, it's to make themselves look more Caucasian. They're putting more of this makeup on their faces to look more Caucasian. They're bleaching their skin. They make sure they get many as possible pictures to get taken with Caucasian people so they can say, look, I got Caucasian friends. When you talk about slavery or anything of the past, they do like this. They don't want to hear you because they don't want to think about and be reminded that they came from a people who were enslaved. I'm done with that. I'm better now. Can't you see how close I am to my master? When I see entertainers like Beyonce and Jay-Z and all those, they are filled with this material wealth and greed. They think the more successful they are, the more material things they get, they think that for some reason these Caucasians are going to accept them as one of their own. But when these blacks get in trouble, who do they call on them for help? Who do they call on to cry on their shoulder? Then they come back to their people. We should start to begin to reject people like that. Do you understand? Why should you be ashamed that you are children of slaves? That's true. And before you Caucasians begin to smile and grin, and think that your beginning is so great. Not too long ago, your ancestors came out of a cave, walking on all fours, didn't know how to take a bath. Look it up, your own history. It's not a secret. So don't try to think or believe that you're greater. And that's another thing. Y'all Negroes who trying to be Caucasian. If you want to be part of them, then get on your all on your all fours and declare that the dog is your best friend. Some of y'all already eating raw meat. You wear animal fur. You want to be like them. That's where they come from. They just came out of a cave, a little less than or a little more than. 6,000 years ago. None of us can brag about our humble beginnings. And all of us came from a sperm and egg. Have y'all seen that sperm and egg? Well, maybe in some porno flicks. Some of y'all off into that. That's where you began. So none of us should try to be bragging about I'm so great and I'm this and that. Look where you come from. Check out any porno movie. Or people in your next door neighbor. <laughs> no. Peace forever and always. This is your brother. Talik Ibn Ra. And welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. <laughs> oh, don't you love it? <laughs> now that I have a... Uh, oh, yeah. I am the Angel Snuff Nub 7. Your brother... Talik Ibn Ra. Thank you, thank you so much for giving me 
another 10 minutes of your time? <laughs> I was told if I made these videos 5 minutes or less, I could get more views. Apparently, I don't care enough about getting views. Uh, apparently, I don't. Now, I'm smiling and, and having a good time with you to begin this uh, video, but the subject matter is, is not, not too uh, joyous. And what I want to say is that a few months ago, I believe, I was watching 60 Minutes. It's a television news program on CBS, and they were speaking of or reporting on European technical, logical, electrical garbage being taken from these countries, and they were being... Um, uh, the refuse from computers and other electronics were taken from out of European nations and sent to places like China. And then you had these poor Chinese people, mostly children, that go onto these electronic garbage dumps or whatever, or either they are paid to separate different parts of the computers and other electronics to try to salvage uh, that which is good and then these things in order to continue to make room they are burned and those the burning of these machines this refuge causes of course toxic fumes in these uh, children as well as those who are uh, around in the surrounding environment breathe in these toxins and uh, of course that is a terrible thing so a viewer of mine directed me to a news article that also shows that these same European nations, and I would also say, and I would, I guess that America is also involved, that they would take their electronic refuge, their old computers and whatever, and send them to poor nations and use poor nations as garbage dumps. So you have uh, Chinese children and uh, uh, Indian children and of course African children. This article that uh, my viewer directed me to was about African children that were uh, trying to salvage these computer parts. And of course you know that these uh, your computer is full of different types of metals and these metals are poisonous. So, in this article that I was reading, this in itself is a terrible thing. This in itself should be talked about. But what makes this so, uh, I can't think of the word, but I'll, you know what I'm speaking of. In the article, they allow you to make comments on the article. And then it sounds like racist Caucasian people are saying, Yay! It's good! Poison them black children. Poison them Chinese children. All of them are like savages anyway. Let them get poisoned and let them die. Who cares? I don't care. I'm not going to give up my machine. Of course there are more environmentally friendly ways to get rid of uh, of electronic garbage but of course we know why we you know we don't like to spend any money we rather do it the evil and the wicked way so for those who don't give a damn about those black children those who don't give a damn about those Chinese children or any of these children of color in these more poverty stricken nations then, just like it says in uh, the Quran, while you plan, Allah plans also. Because if there's mercury 
in those computers, if there's all these poisonous toxins, somebody had to build them or place them in order to get there. So I hate to bust your bubble, but right here in America, why are you hoping that these black children and all these other children of uh, darker peoples die and be poisoned from these, from your electronic garbage? Right here in America, they're not going to tell you you just a fool. You think just because you Caucasian that you protected from this kind of exploitation. But you will see in the coming days, matter of fact, if you do a little research, you'll find many, many sick people in the manufacturing industry who mess with these different chemicals. They are full of cancers. Matter of fact, those who live around oil refineries, they find that their ground water has been poisoned. Some people depend on ground water. They drink the ground water that is poisoned by shell, that is poisoned by these other oil refineries, BP and others. They poison the area where they are refining this and they're poisoning the people. We're finding out that the workers themselves are being poisoned because there are ways in order to protect a worker from such environmental hazards. There are ways in order to best protect the citizens in the area where all this is being manufactured. But of course we know the bottom line is money. So while you are bragging and happy about these children and the community that's surrounding these electronic garbage dumps, and that's another thing. There are plenty of areas in European nations that can be used as electronic garbage. We always talk about how we want the world. There's, we're all the same blood. And we're all the same and love everybody. But when it comes to dumping your garbage, how come the electronic garbage is always ending up in the home of a person of a darker descent? But you claim all this love and embracing we need to stop being tricked by these devils. And that's what I said. These people that behave like that are devils. They don't give a damn about you. They smile in your face and stab you in the back. But again, for those racist Caucasian people, chances are you are middle class or poor. You are the most stupid because you think just because of your Caucasian skin, you think that you are exempt from being exploited. They are filling your children up with psychiatric drugs, giving them these false illnesses, ADHD, DDX, and all this other garbage, and you willingly take your child to a psychiatrist, and then, now, the black child in Africa might be getting his toxins because of your garbage dump, but you volunteer. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, say it with me now, the mighty, 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 huh. And your snub enough seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. All over the internet, throughout this nation, and around the world, you will hear so many voices of people with dark skin, including those who are the descendants of slaves born in America, those who call themselves black, those who have a common relationship 
having origins upon the continent of Africa, ancestors from the continent of Africa, being descendants of slaves who were from the continent of Africa, and regardless where they are, most of these have been conquered by and oppressed by the racist pink people of this planet. Europeans, and they have been victims for a very long time due to the expansion of what we know of as Western civilization having the dynamic of pink or white supremacy. So as a consequence of this oppression, as a result of this oppression, you will have you will hear the cry all over this planet a cry for justice a cry for freedom a cry for liberation from this oppression liberation from this injustice and all of these have the right, like all oppressed people, to wish for a revolution, a rebellion against the evil, the injustice, the inequality, the denial of freedom that they have experienced for such a long time. It is anyone's right, and even the racist European pink people and American people, even they would tell you, and they have also expressed that they dislike oppression, they dislike injustice, but when there is a benefit to injustice, where it benefits them, it seems as though they have no problem. So for a long time, and it has yet to happen, and we wonder why it has not happened. But so many of these black people, these Africans, they want to bang on this beast and get this evil off of them once and for all. I want to be liberated. So all over this planet, you hear from the black people, the Africans, calls for black liberation and that is your right however what is it that you want to be liberated from what is black liberation if the result is not that you are different from those who oppress you an example of this is your own experience being a victim of Caucasian supremacy when the same Caucasian people did not like oppression they fought against it but at the same time they had no problem with oppressing other people and they also became a microcosm of the people of whom they fought a revolution against. The people that they fought a revolution against practiced black slavery. They practiced many things that the oppressed people complain about, but once the oppressed people got this sucker off of their back, they became a mirror to those of whom they fought against. In fact, the United States or the United States of America is worse than England or Britain. They are ten times as worse. And because of the power that America, this nation has attained, the motherland supports 
this baby in its evil all over the earth and its continuation of the oppression of dark people that they say and they claim stopped when in reality it has not stopped and in Washington DC as they gathered for the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington DC they still sing we shall overcome this tells us that nothing has overcame this tells us that there is really not too much difference between the then and the now but my question to all of these persons who yearn to be free who claim they are a part of or have the mindset of black liberation what is it that you want to liberate yourself from besides just the oppression of Western civilization the racist pink people black liberation without a sense of morality black liberation without a sense of righteous behavior is a failure it is worthless it is not worth seeking what is it that you want to be liberated to do so that you can copy the Europeans so that you can do the same thing that they have done except now that you are free of their oppression you want to be liberated so that you can be a drunk so that you can be a porn star a dope fiend a pedophile a woman beater what is it that you want to be liberated why is it that you want to be liberated I am not an advocate of religious teachings however within religious teachings we understand that there is something called morality and righteous behavior and this is something that must be set up so that the human being can have some type of law within themselves there are things that you can do and you can't do in order so that you can have some type of dictate in your life you do not want to be free to do anything that you want to because true freedom equals chaos and mayhem and that's the reason why and this is what you see in today's society in freedom I could do whatever I want and since you could do whatever you want there is also a consequence and you're not smart enough to learn from your detriment so you pass on your evil you pass on these consequences to future generations and they don't learn nothing either so the only thing you want to do in your black liberation is to get rid of your oppressor get rid of your conqueror and you want to be just like the European American people just copy what your mommy and daddy did that you complain about be like the Christian church and it is like the Christian church you want to be a Christian but you like paganism so in order for the Christian church in order for them or it was their belief that in order for them to make Christianity more acceptable they kept many of the ways and the practice the rituals of paganism it did not work so they still had to use violence to force people into Christianity but that was the idea so you have many people who, sh who shout black power hotel ashe but the only life that you really know is that of living among races and as I listen to your doctrine as I listen to what you teach you take some of what you learn and what you know of living in the racist Caucasian world 
their religion, their ideology, their thinking process, and you bring it to black liberation. So what's the sense of being liberated when in reality you are not being liberated? The only thing you are doing is coloring your oppressor, making it black. So now that it is more acceptable, but continue the ways of those who oppress you and place you in this sad condition. True liberation means that you must form high standards for yourself. And you must be opposite of that which you came from. This is not an easy process. But you must begin it starting with ourselves. So that from generation to generation, they will be coming to the people that we really want to be but cannot and too weak because of our influence and our closeness to our oppressors. Holding on to some of the ways, many of the ways of those that conquered us. We must develop in ourselves what we call righteous and behaviors of morality, not oppression. Nothing religious, but high standards of conduct. If you're going to continue to exploit the black woman, you want her on a stripper pole. You want to put her naked body all over and lust for her flesh. If you want to continue to get high. If you want to continue to, to do the same thing that you're doing right now. You don't deserve, and I am very happy that you are a far distance away from being liberated, because you don't deserve it. We are the catalyst of a brand new civilization. We are the catalyst of a brand new reality, but that reality can't come into existence because you hold on to the old ways. So in the religious teachings, it talks about of how the old people had to die out in order for the younger people to bring into existence something brand new. Dr. King said, I might not get there with you, but you're going to get there. It is not for us to get there. We're not going to get there with them. But we are the callous. We are the beginning. If you understand, liberation not only means physical separation, but it means the liberation of the mind, the mentality of your conqueror. But to continue to call yourself a nigger, to continue to want to get high and get drunk and beat your woman, oppress, your, oppress the female and deny her her rightful place and all these different things, you still want to continue this decadent way of life. You do not deserve liberation and you're never going to get it. That's why you continue to stay exactly where you're at and nothing new... In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on the World Wide Web. Well, well. <laughs> I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. angel snub number seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. There is an old saying and it goes like this. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your money where your mouth is. Because people 
hold money to such high regard, usually if they are serious about something, they will put their money, they will invest their money into whatever it is that they are talking about. Put your money where your mouth is. I would like to send this message to Caucasian people. I would like to send this message to the dark Europeans, the upper ruckus, the sambos, these Negroes who love their masa. You know who you are and you know who I am describing. Those who are patriotic to America, you Negroes, and if that's what you want to do, that's fine and dandy. Because perhaps you will help me in this venture that I suggest. Put your money where your mouth is. During the uh, trial, well actually during, what's the word I'm looking for? But since the death of our little brother, Trayvon Martin and due to so many Caucasian people and some Negroes who feel or felt as though George Zimmerman was not guilty then George Zimmerman set up a website and to my knowledge or from what I heard the website raised almost $300,000 for the defense of George Zimmerman to help him get no punishment for the murder of an unarmed child. <laughs> so these people put their money where their mouth is. I feel as though George Zimmerman is not guilty, so I will help George Zimmerman. I will put my money where my mouth is. Five dollars here, a dollar here, ten dollars here, almost three hundred thousand dollars. So I come before all of you who think this way, because chances are if you think this way, you will also have the mentality to tell all of us who speak against injustice that these Caucasian people have done and still continue to do, we show that we are dissatisfied, upset with this nation. You will tell us why stay in America? Get the hell out. The Uncle Ruckus, the Uncle Coon, the Uncle Tom, dark Europeans, as well as Caucasian people themselves. You have become sick and tired of people like me who complain about the racism because things have gotten better. Stop being a victim. Go back to Africa. You would bring this type of talk to me. So I want to present to you something. And I want you to put your money where your mouth is. I would like for you, Caucasian people, white people, pink people, along with your Uncle Tom Ruckus, dark Europeans, those who love you so much and who are willing to wait another 400 years so perhaps after another 400 years, they finally will be viewed as a man. Finally, they don't have to sing after another, it would be 800 years. Finally, they will be able to say, not only shall we overcome, but now we have overcame. But while they are overcoming after 800 years, I would like to place those children that follow behind we who wish to separate from our oppressors, they would be doing well and good. In fact, 
many of the children of the Uncle Tom and Dark Europeans will be doing their best to go where those who separated 400 years ago. Because that land, that place, will be more peaceful, more honest, more equal. We cannot expect perfection, but we can expect better than what we see right now, which is outright evil. And this is something we don't want to be. So put your money where your mouth is. Like you support George Zimmerman, the killing of an unarmed teenage child. Then I ask you to join me. I don't want to love you. I don't want your daughter. I don't want your money. Well, actually, I do want your money. I want you to put your money where your mouth is. Join with me, organize with me, so that we can get this ball rolling, so we can separate and go back to Africa. Go back to somewhere other than this place. Because I don't want to be around you. You don't want to be around me. You don't want justice for me. I know you're not going to give us justice. So stop the complaining. Put your money where your mouth is. All of those who are not satisfied living here, there are many. So you are comfortable with your Uncle Tom, dark European, ruckus type Negro. You can have them. Keep going to bed with them. Keep having half breed babies with them, mulatto babies or whatever. Y'all keep having your little party going on. They can tolerate you. I don't want to be around you no more because you're lying, you're fake. And you are even more fake if you do not join with me. Give me your money, just like you gave George Zimmerman, so that we can go back to Africa. I can guarantee you many black people will leave, including some of your dark European Uncle Tom type Negroes, because once we leave and establish ourselves and become that which we really are, they will see, finally, that we are not the people that have been painted before the world. So what are you going to do with this? First of all, the first step is that you need to stay out of our business. You need to tell Fox, CNBC, and all your media outlets to stay the hell out of black business. Stop talking about our issues because you, you don't want to help us. You don't want to do nothing to help us. So why don't you shut up? Get out of our business. You don't care nothing about black on black crime. You don't care about us, period. So shut the hell up. Stay out of our business. That's number one. Number two, we need your money. We need your resources. What you going to do with the money? What you going to do with the resources? We're going to establish colonies in places we believe that we can separate an exodus to. We use this money to go and send um, ambassadors all over the planet to talk to world leaders to find out whether we can get a deal so that we can place ourselves in a position to create a nation of our own. I don't want to be a citizen of Ghana. I don't want to be a citizen citizens of Ethiopia. I don't want to be a citizen of no black nation. I want my own. After 400 years, the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves born in America, you deserve your own so you can be yourself. You are related to our brothers and sisters in Ghana and Somalia and the Sudan and all over this planet, but we are not them. We want to go somewhere so we can be ourselves. So that we can exhibit or express our own experience. We don't need any more slave masters. Whether that slave master is Caucasian or another black man. We need this money to establish business in America. What you going to do? You going to establish business in America. The sole purpose of the businesses in America is so that they can uh, accumulate the profit to support exodus. 
Also, we don't hate you. We don't mind doing business with you. But we just don't want no more personal relationship with you. And as we get stronger, as we are successful, we want you to promise and we will strike a deal with the government so that you can give us our prisoners in jail. First, our political prisoners, then our brothers and sisters that's in all these prisons and jails all over this country. That will help you in your, in your debt so you don't have to pay for all these prisoners. They're not doing you no real good locked up behind bars. So let these prisoners free as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad suggested so many years ago so that they can leave America never to return so they can go somewhere else and build a nation of their own. So even though they are considered criminals, when history speaks, they can say that these people help bring into reality a brand new civilization. Create a brand new people. If you help me do this, I'm not looking to love your daughter. I don't care what you have. We want our own. It is possible in the United States itself. But you don't want us here. So anybody with common sense knows that you need to leave this house. Personally, I don't want to live under the jurisdiction and the control of the United States of America. I don't even want dual citizenship. We should want something of our own. We, want, we should be able to express our own intelligence. So put your money where your mouth is. Y'all talk all this stuff. I will set up the account. Send me the emails. Show me that you're serious. And the process will begin. And the only Negroes that will be left are the ones that y'all like, that y'all love. And, and they love you. I don't love you. I'm going to be just honest, point blank. I don't like living in your wicked society. Your fakeness. Smile in our face, stab us in the back. You shouldn't even want to go through the fakeness no more. You shouldn't even want to continue this fraud. So be real. Or do you just want somebody here in the United Snakes of America so you can pick on us? So you can kill us at will? So you can continue to molest and rape and do the things that you've done to us for the last 400 years? Is that the reason why you won't put your money where your mouth is? Help us get the ships. Help us get the planes. Assist us in this endeavor. We will also be helping ourselves. We will also be helping ourselves. But when our people see that there is a serious attempt to enter this, this wicked nation, I can guarantee you many eyes will open and many people will get on that plane, get on that train, boat, whatever it is, to leave y'all wicked. And you can
and other things have caused this division between men and women. We know this. So, answer my question, how do you achieve any type of benefit by bashing constantly these women who are nothing but a victim of what you say, feminism and whatever? What are you going to gain? The majority of my job was in customer service. And when you come to McDonald's, the person at the register is supposed to tell you, Hi, welcome to McDonald's. My name is so-and-so. Have a nice day. What would you like? Very kind and courteous. If you want women to listen to what you're talking about, if you went to McDonald's and you were getting ready to give your order, how would you react to somebody? Yeah. Yeah, you ain't McDonald's. Where the hell you think you was at? Man, this, this damn menu been up here for, for a hundred years. You don't know what the menu McDonald's is selling the same stuff since 1965 or whatever. Damn, man, hurry up. I got a date later on. How would you feel with that type of attitude when you go to McDonald's? You wouldn't like it. So how do you expect to get any response from these women? How do you think you're going to get them to listen to what you have to say by that type of talk? Bash, 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 and y'all this, and the woman and that, and blah, blah. Girl, there's a difference. A girl is immature. A girl is a child. You're a grown woman. Some of y'all are very grown. You're 50, 60 years old. You should see or feel that it is disrespectful. Blah, man, I'm tongue-tied. It's disrespectful to call you a girl. And if you're not, and if you're not a bimbo or acting like some uh, loose woman, then you should, if you're uh, between a girl and a woman, you're lady and you're ladylike, then either you're a grown woman or they should call you a wonderful young lady. This message goes out to these men who I believe, I'm not really sure because I haven't really been out there in a long time, but I'm pretty sure they still like bashing women and they got this thing about and the feminism this and the women that and la 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 la. I just cannot get into that. I just I just cannot do it because a man is just too strong. In a lot of cases, he's strong mentally. We already know physically, but he can become strong. Mentally or verbally, and words hurt women. Women, the way we've been conditioned, women are more emotional than men are. So, you have all these black women bashing videos. The women get so emotional, they know they should stay away. Leave these guys alone. Let them simmer in their own anger or frustration or whatever. But they go to these videos and they make these comments just so these misguided men can beat up on them. Has caused them to behave or condition them to be. And there are other factors. Whatever you want to explain to them was the cause behind male-female division. But I'm telling you from experience and it's common sense. Nobody wants to be hurt and beat. You don't either. I used to have some old videos and I, knew I was just talking about men should not beat and beat women verbally and just talking about men in general but y'all went nuts. You flagged the videos. You went crazy. That 
do then you went ballistic because you don't want nobody talking negative about you. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the Angel Snubbin' Up 7, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another, hopefully, exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I was born in the 1960s. A few months after I was born, the President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, was assassinated. About two years later, I was probably two years old or three, one of our great leaders, Malcolm X, was assassinated. And then three years later, Martin Luther King. I lived, I was born. Why don't you change your strategy? And not only to women, that's anybody. Nobody want to hear about their negativity, what's wrong with them all the time. People want to hear nice things. They want to hear kind things. That's why a lot of these women get pregnant. Because the dude, the guy who they talking with, he said, Hey, baby. Damn, that's a fly dress you got on. Hey, what's that you, what's that you wearing? That show smell good. Man, that's, ooh, look at your teeth. They so bright and shiny. And you know you got it together. Damn, ain't no woman as fly. I'm, no, I'm serious. Ain't no woman as fly as you. You, you really got it going on. You... Boy, if I could turn a flip, man, I'd be turning blue, blue. You got to bring a little something better. When you praise people, regardless whether they deserve it or not, when you praise people, when you talk to them in a positive manner, they will begin to listen to you. Ain't that what you want? Don't you want the woman don't want don't you want the woman to embrace you don't you want her hug don't you want her kiss you can't you can't get that by feeding her or anybody it's always good to be kind now in my case <laughs> it's a little different you're not me in my case I try to be kind and I they still keep want to whack on me. <laughs> hey, I, I can't. Hey, I can't win for losing. So, but you're not me. You're not me. You just want a decent conversation with the women, so you can tell them what has happened, so they can break up out of what feminism. Alrighty then. Peace, fam, and always. This is your brother, the Angel Snuffin' Up 7, Talik Even Raw, and welcome. <laughs> I'm, tongue, I'm tongue tied. 
And welcome once again to another edition <laughs> of the Realities Temple on Earth. Oh, man. Since I'm before the camera, I, I wanted to deal with this subject before I shut, shut the equipment down. This uh, message is, is really for the men, the males, rather than the ladies. But of course, I like for the ladies to also, the women, even some of the girls. There's a difference between girls, ladies, and women. But it's good for all. And I would hope that grown adult women would stop allowing people to call them girls because you're not a 